Hi, all. Just some updates. Um, what's been going on. I have been spending a lot of time in my garden. It's absolutely incredible weather where I live. And so it's hard not to be in the garden. And I've just come back from two weeks on the road where I gave four different lectures on um, Wikipedia and spending a lot of quality time with people in our community and having a, an absolute blast. So um, I have some very interesting videos I want to do. Uh, somebody gave me the name of a psychic that I'd never heard of before, and I'm hoping to start working on those videos soon, and maybe an article. But let's just get some miscellaneous stuff for you that are watching the channel. I've talked to a lot of different people about this channel because even though I'm <clears throat> even though I'm talking about Wikipedia, I do mention this channel, Psychics Explained. So hopefully. Um, we have some new viewers and I do see some new subscribers. So thank you very much. Uh, we we think we hit, oh my gosh, some amazing number of people who viewed uh, the channel. I got a, a note on it. Oh, 250,000 views of this channel, of the videos on this channel. That's not 250,000 people. That's just views. <clears throat> I hear from people all the time who tell me that they watch all the videos or, you know, at least on the playlist. So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to take suggestions. And as I said, we are gaining in subscribers. So a few of my thoughts, no particular order at all. Let's see. I gave a talk at the Triangle Skeptics, which is in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I wasn't talking on psychics, but I did mention psychics explained um, during my talk. And a woman who was there, and she was brand new, had never been to any kind of event. She didn't know who I was. And she has, I don't want to say too much about who she is, but she works with people in a counseling way, professional, professional counseling way. And she had a client who was... um in a widow in his seventies. And she comes, she comes over to talk to me and she says, Oh my gosh, I had no idea I was going to meet you today, but I really need some help, some advice. And she had a lot of um, ideas that were typical ideas of what is going on in society when it comes to psychics. And the more I spend investigating and spending time talking to mediums and talking to people who are, um, you know, uh, sitters of mediums, the more I'm understanding about what's going on. And over time, you can see from the beginning of my videos to now, which I'm recording this in June 18th, 2024, I have, I think I'm changing my not my approach so much but i'm learning so much more from the comments you guys leave me and the different kinds of videos and the different kinds of readings and the that i'm watching i think there's i think there's there's been some change i'm a lot more sympathetic to mediums not because i think that they're real but i think a lot of them are prey just in the same way that the sitter is prey. Again, it always seems to be women. Um, anyway, so I was talking to this to this professional woman who, about her client, and she doesn't know what to do because he's a widow and he's spending um, quite a bit of his time getting readings from some international online group of people who are getting readings and he's in touch with his wife who's been dead four years and he's in serious grief and he's just not any suggestions she, she th throws out there as a counselor he's just like nope can't do that nope can't do that nope can't do that and so she's asking me what can i do can you give me a link can you tell me what to say can you give me an article to read what can i say to this man to help him start the grieving process and 
well, you know, because he thinks he's in contact with his wife. And if you think you're in contact with your dead wife after four years, there's nothing you can say. There's nothing I can give her to do. There's no magic that I could, you know, or fairy dust or anything I could throw on him. This man is in the rabbit hole and you cannot get him out with logic or some well-reasoned uh, article or watching some psychic get caught up in a sting. It's, it's not happening. You can't, you can't really do that because cognitive dissonance. This man, if he was to be presented with, I don't know, the, the best evidence in the world, like the psychic he's seeing or the psychics he's seeing were to automatic be busted, like, you know, with notes and stuff on how to do fake readings or something. I mean, you could give him the best evidence at this point and he probably wouldn't believe it. Or if he was confronted with it, and forced to believe it, it would have serious effects to his mental health, the, the husband. When you are when you're, think you're contacting a loved one, when you really believe you're in communication and you don't have no suspicions that it's not happening, if you were suddenly told or suddenly confronted with the reality that you're, you haven't been, It'd be like losing that person again. And when you're already in grief, loneliness, desperation, you know, seeing your own mor mortality right in your face, that it'll soon be you and your kids aren't around or you didn't have kids or, or you know, nobody rallied around you for your, for your wife. <laughs> it's nothing. So... In her case, I explained this to her. And uh, she says that these mediums are preying on him. And I said, well, we don't know that for sure. You know, from what you've told me, I don't know that. I said, now, this you may or may not agree with me on this. But with those, what I've just explained to you that, like I said, you're not going to talk this man out of it. I said that he's probably in the safest place he possibly can be right now um, because these grief groups, which he's involved in a grief group of a bunch of widows and mediums are in there, you know, preying on them and they're getting readings and they're suggesting more mediums for each other. A lot of these groups are aware that there are predatory mediums out there so i mean there's people who are predators and there are people who are really do believe that they're helping and they're not as i'm not gonna say it's dangerous or expensive but they're less likely to um try to isolate you separate you from the pack of other people and like you know, do some really serious, serious financial damage to you and isolate you from your family and friends. When you're in a pack of other people who are also grieving, possibly they're on, they're looking out for each other and they're sticking with the mediums who are more benign, a little, I mean, of course, they're still manipulating people, but that was my suggestion to her. I said, I think the best thing to do would be not to isolate this man, not to tell him he's stupid, not to tell him that they're all frauds, but to keep him coming to counseling um, and say, you know, well, let's talk about this. So what happened last week? Or, you know, how do you feel about that? Whatever counselors do, I'm not a counselor. Keep him talking. Um, he adamantly refuses to have hobbies or to go out and find something to do with himself. But I think maybe possibly in time, you can keep suggesting something to help him pull himself out of the cycle he's in. Um, he could also talk to his doctor about it. If you can get him to talk to a doctor and see if maybe, maybe there's more things going on than just, um, grief. I mean, there's medically things can help or things may be happening. 
And I said, I, I would just leave him there. And if there's family that could be um, encouraged to not come after dad and, or uncle or brother or whatever, and like say, you know, you're a lunatic, we're going to lock you up, you know, nothing like that, but sympathetically uh, keep the lines of communication open, you know, invite him for Christmas or, you know, keep, um, call him up on the phone and talk to him about things, you know, memories and stuff like that. That might help. <clears throat> Here's my big suggestion. You tell me if I'm wrong. I said, um, he should get a dog. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. No, bear with me here. <clears throat> If you have a dog, most dogs love you unconditionally. And if it's a, a dog that needs care and love, you know, vets, vet visits the vet or whatever, you you just love that pup, that dog, and you now need him, and he need he or she needs you. It's unconditional love. And I think that maybe in some cases that might be a good way of helping to get through the grief. No, I'm not an expert. This is just a suggestion. Also getting exercise, walking the dog, that kind of thing gets you out of the house. It gets you moving a little bit more, meeting people on the streets and talking to them. And maybe that would be a good idea of helping him along with this. You'd have something to talk about besides his, his, um, his his wife and maybe that'd help and i said maybe he should have a puppy because a puppy will wear him out <laughs> he really won't have any he won't have any time to spend on the internet <laughs> he will be exhausted <laughs> he'll go to bed he'll be out a couple puppies even anyway so i suggested this to her and she was kind of like uh, it was definitely not what she was thinking. But anyway, <clears throat> leave me comments. I hope you like and subscribe to the channel, as I said. And I, I love your comments, you guys. I learned so much from you. So leave me comments on what you think of that. Another thing that happened um, today, I was asked, well, I had been asked months ago to give a talk to students, 12, like 14 to 17 year olds. And it was an, a Christian group and it's evangelical Christian group that they bring in speakers who are, I guess, let's say on the opposite spectrum as far as belief. And now it was pretty clear. <clears throat> and I talked to people who had done this kind of thing that they'd go and they do these talks. They've been doing it for years. Like what it does is the family, what they do is they, they, um, this organization, it brings in these speakers, but what they do is they pull children and their parents from far away into one location. And then they have a series of lectures by people like myself or, you know, people who are, like I say, I'm critically thinking kind of people who are opposite of the religious angle. Like, I guess they'd have people talk about religion, people who were atheists. And, <laughs> and, what they're teaching these kids to do. Now they say they're just teaching their kids the critical thinking and so on. But the people I've talked to who, who've worked with these people, Ooh, it's like a, like something from heaven. <laughs> um, that they use this for the kids to get better at proselytizing, to learn the arguments that we would make. And so that they can go and they can go up to people and talk to them and, and have better chances of evangelizing their Christianity to them. In fact, what they do is like after it's like a whole week, they're in this program with the same group of kids and um, they practice, like they go out to like, if they were in LA, they'd go down to some, some like pier area, you know, beach area, and they'd walk along and they would proselytize, practice proselytizing people who are walking by other tourists and people fishing off the pier and stuff like that. It's a way of practicing. So I know darn well that I'm being used for that, for that. But they asked me if I would talk about psychics. I guess they'd seen some of my work and they interviewed me and they said, you know, you're actually quite 
nice and you're interesting and you can speak and and I think you'd be a good speaker for this. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. So it's about an hour away. So I went today. Nice group of people. Very nice. They were very interested in um, what I had to say. And I had thought about doing presentations. I was going to show them some of the different stings I'd done. Um, you know, all these things had gone through my mind the last month or so, what I was going to do. And then I thought I would do, a. I, I, I don't even know where these kids are, if they even know what a psychic is or anything of the sort. So I thought, well, gosh, you know, some of the parents will be there, so maybe they'll get it. Um, I thought I'd do a talk just on signs, S-I-G-N-S, you know, like how, how a psychic says, I'm getting a sign, it's a coin, it's a music, it's a bird, it's, you know, I thought I'd do something like that to really get to the basics and also explain hot and cold reading. So this morning I get up and I'm thinking, I don't really have anything seriously prepared, no presentation, no slides, no audio, no video, nothing. I mean, I have all that. It's on my laptop and I took it with me and I wasn't rehearsing in my mind what I was going to say. I said, I'm going to go in cold. And I did, I went in and there's about 20 kids and some parents and sitting in this room. And I gave them a very brief overview of who I am and what I do. And I said to them, look, I don't know you and you don't know me, but I'd like to know what you guys know about psychics, what questions you have. I did explain briefly hot and cold reading. and gave a few examples but that's kind of where I went with it and they asked good questions so these kids were aware I don't think they knew who necessarily I, I doubt they're watching tv that sees like they wouldn't know Tyler Henry or John Edward or anything like that is I don't think they got that um but <clears throat> I only had one religious question and here's how I handle it a young woman in the front row she raised her hand and she asked me do you think that these now I'm mostly with, concerned with mediums, right? But I often use the word psychic. Um, but I mean the same thing in this case that people who claim to communicate with the dead. So I asked, she asked me, do you think these psychics are in communication with demons and Satan and stuff like that? And that's what's going on. So I want her to say face. I don't want to make her still seem silly. And I don't want to have, you know, we're just starting out. I don't, I want to make sure that I keep her engaged. So the way I answered her was for better, or for worse, is I don't believe in any of that. Um, I don't believe in demons and anything like that. Um, and I said, I think what's going on is much more complicated and much more interesting. So let's talk about what I think is going on. And then I went in and I talked a little bit more about mediumship and and grief and so on. And so they asked me the standard questions like, well, why do people why do people still do it? go? You know, why do they want to do this? Why do they want to believe? And I and I explained in a lot of cases, it's not that they want to, it's that they need to believe in in this. It's it's awful. And then I said, you know, you guys probably haven't experienced real grief especially a grief of a child. Well, of course, none of these kids had, but I should call them students. Thank you. Or young adults. Of course, they haven't experienced that. You know, possibly they've had a sibling die when they've um, had, you know, family has died around them. But I explained to them what grief can do to you. And everybody's different. And you can see the parents in the back and they're just like nodding their head like, oh, yeah, I know all about grief, you know. And I said, you know, parents expect to outlive their children. I mean, their children to outlive them. And so if that doesn't happen and the child dies before them, it's too much, right? You know, some people just have to go to something else to, because of this. Um, and then they were asking me questions like, why don't you just show them how hot reading and cold reading works and all that and just explain it to them? And I, I explained, I said, well, that's what I do. But to somebody who believes um, in this, they're not going to be receptive to it or they're going to say, 
ah, I gotcha, I gotcha, this is a, my psychic doesn't do that. My psychic's real. Other psychics might do that, but my psychic isn't. And another question was, why don't you, when you're exposing the psychic, why don't you just reveal it and just, you know, do that kind of thing? And I'm like, well, because we want to stay in character. We want, There's always more things that are happening and we stay in character until we write it up. The psychic won't know that we were there and we were, gave him, you know, and we did a sting, an investigation. Psychic's not going to know because they ain't psychic. And I talked to him about ex how that had happened. I got other really great questions. And one said, well, you're saying that they're all frauds, but do you think they all believe? So you're saying they, do, they believe, what do you say? They know they're frauds or they don't think they're frauds or something like that. And I said, well, I've never said they're all frauds. Um, to me, fraud is like a legal term. Um, I said that they, I think a lot of these people, not the people on TV, not those people, those people are in a cold, totally different category. And that's what most people perceive of mediums is those people that are on TV, you know, the Teresa Caputo's and the Tyler Henry's and all them. I said, that's a whole different level. They have publicists and, you know, all this stuff. They know what's going on. But to the mediums that are, you know, a lot of people have seen personally, you know, their friends a medium or they went and saw somebody at this and that, you know, people who aren't high profiles so that don't have TV shows. Those people may start out thinking they're helping somebody they want to help and they don't realize what they're doing is faking or embellishing or playing wordplay with a person I think a good chunk of them actually think they're helping and somewhere along the lines um, they get so much feedback from somebody like, you know, you're giving a reading to somebody and then they, the person starts crying and, and they're like, oh my gosh, you're so accurate. There's no way you could have known that some, somewhere down the line, I think you might start to think, Hey, I got something here. Some days I might have to cheat. Some days I might have to, uh, you know, play along with it. And, you know, I just was guessing, but it seemed to hit. So maybe, maybe there is something to this. And they start to believe it themselves. So anyway, so it was a really good experience. Um, I Hopefully I'm going to get some photos. I took some nice photos, but who knows? Um, they said they'll send them to me. And they just, I did this because even though that I knew that they were thinking from the atheist angle, I didn't go there pretty much. I explained to them that Um, you know, they asked for advice and I said, just be forewarned. And I explained about how our brains are wired, where we, whenever there's a, there's a, a coincidence, we might see it as a sign or we put too much into whatever that penny is you found on the ground. And it has the same, it's the same year as your father's birth. And you say, oh, I was just thinking of dad, you know, explaining this to them. I hope. And I said, we all do it. You know, it's just human nature for us to do that kind of stuff, to find, make, make um, reason out of something. Like I said, for example, like if you have a die, you know, a six sided die, something like this, and you say, I'm going to roll a six. Okay. Now the odds of rolling a six are one out of six. I mean, if the die is not a trick die. So you roll the die and you get a three. A lot of us, what we'll do is we'll go, eh, well, that's half a six. Like as if that's almost a six. Or if you said, I'm rolling for a six and you got a five, you say, almost, I almost got it. See, so we reason that out in our brains to, to make it fit because we're humans. We want to make things fit. <laughs> we want, we want to make connections with things. So we talked about that and I told them that. And, and when they were interviewing me a long time ago for this, for, for doing this talk, uh, the man who was interviewing me said that he's seen um, that they, they prepare their kids for if they're meeting somebody who's not Christian, 
how to deal with that. And and a lot of families, they tell their kids not to trust people who are atheists and so on. But as soon as somebody says that they're godly or you think they're a church going person, these people just completely, you know, all the all those shields and the protections they have, critical thinking go down. This is what this man is telling me. He says, I've seen this happen in so many families that is, if if they think you're a godly person, they'll buy your insurance or your car or you know, whatever it is you're selling or your product or join your multi-level marketing. He says, they don't understand that they're being preyed on. So I talked to the kids about that today too. I told them, you know, um, not to trust people just because you think they're, you know, in the same religion as you or the same, they feel like they've been endorsed by somebody in, in the church. And I, I think, I think they got it. The parents seem to be like, yeah, okay. <clears throat> I told them there's tons of scams. Psychics are only one of many. I said, there's, you know, uh, romance scams. And I said that, believe it or not, romance scams, the, the majority of people who we know of in the last studies I've seen, mostly it's kids, teenagers <clears throat> who are falling for these romance scams. They just don't have enough life experience, I guess. And then there there's a lot of problems in, in uh, pressure to have you know a significant other and somebody's paying attention to them. You know, your hormones are all doing these weird things. I didn't get into that much depth with them, but I did explain to them what, um, that, that it's, that's happened. So I told them, and I didn't want to get too far into it, but I talked about sexting scams. I said, you know, your family can talk to you about that, but you have to be cautious. The person you're talking to may not be the person you think you're talking to. And sometimes you're, the people who you think are friends are not necessarily your friends, even if you know them in real life. And the parents are in the background going, yeah. And I said, what you should do is, you know, because they asked for advice. And I said, well, you're all forewarned about psychics. Okay. So here's my contact information if you have questions. But it's not, I said, most people that get into this and really deep into it were not really well warned about it. Um, they didn't see the warning signs. And the best way to, to help somebody is to give them an, um, an inoculation against them, you know, give them a little bit so that they can say, ah, okay, I've heard about this. You know, like if, if you uh, have a friend that you haven't talked to in years, calls you out of the blue and says, hey, I haven't talked to you in ages. Let's get together. I want to talk to you about something or come over to my house. I'm, I'm having a little party. Okay. So <laughs> I'm little oh, antennas go up on me and I say multi-level marketing scam right <laughs> okay that's where I'm going with some of this stuff and the business opportunity or they want to sell you some kind of annuity or insurance or something like that so we kind of know that kind of stuff because we've been around right you guys all out there I'm sure have learned this I learned the hard way too <laughs> and <laughs> oh yeah I'd never done one, but I have been invited to those let's get together stuff. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I talked to him about that. And I said, the best thing you can do is be forewarned, have some knowledge so that you not don't expect that you can't fall for this, even with knowledge, because, you know, of course you can fall for whatever, especially if you're in a point where you're in grief and you're lonely and isolated and you're stressed out about things of course we can fall for stuff like this but you're better able to and i said watch out for your friends and i said keep the communication open with you and your parents and your family members and people you trust your clergy um talk to them and and have an open relationship not an open relationship but you know a communication relationship and do that for your friends too so that if they're having some kind of issue they tell you and then you can help them get in touch with somebody who could probably really help anyway so that real, went really well okay so i'm going to show you this little guy um it was a new york times article and let me see i want to just 
share this so it's just this one. Um, let me just clean this up here for a second so you guys don't see everything. I don't have to have less editing to do. Okay, the other stuff you can see. So um, this was sent to me today. Now I read the New York Times every day, but I somehow missed this because it was about life coaches. And I, you know, life coaches, whatever, I know a little bit about it. Well, actually I knew some about it. There's a lot of people who are um, using that as a tagline for other things that they are doing, like, um, um, you know, they do the psychic work, the mediumship stuff, and they're a life coach <laughs> or or whatever. So this is a fascinating article and it is about life coaches. And it was sent to me, this is written by Katie Bishop and it was published on June 2nd, 2024. And it talks about how these people are unsatisfied in their lives. They have a career they don't like, or they are forced to work from home um, because, you know, they're taking care of their family or they're, you know, have young children at home and, and they, they join up into this idea of doing, becoming a life coach. And there's tons of information out there as far as like podcasts and books and stuff and lessons. And this one woman, they follow this one woman and mullet, mullet. And she checks out like $25,000 to be a life coach. I think she was a nurse before and she considers herself a very smart person and she just needed to get away from the nursing field. And she starts getting pressured. She finds out that the classes they're giving are just nonsense. You know, it's basically a group gathering where you just sit around and you talk about books you've read or, or podcasts you've listened to. But they keep asking for more and more money for more and more um, courses. And then you finally get a certificate from them. It took her six months, I think she said. And what happens is it's like these self-help groups. She says that she should be, they expect her to make $6,000 and, or no, what was it? I think that she should be making $100,000. $100, um, here it is. Everything I needed to make my first $100,000. And there's a lot of pressure. And then what happens is she finds out, there she is right there. She finds out that what the what's going on, you guys have to look this up um, on your own. She finds out the, what's pretty much going on is that after she gets her certificate and she's trying to find clients and stuff, they're saying, well, you're not signed up for any more courses with us. She goes, I've just spent like 15, $20,000 on courses in the last six months. I don't need any more courses. And they're like, how can you sell life coaching to people if you're not getting life coaching? See, it's a trap. It's a trap. So anyway, it follows that and it talks about that industry. And I thought, this is what's going on with mediumship. Absolutely, 100% now. This has been something that I've been thinking about for a while, but I haven't really articulated it for a while, that these mostly women who are home, who need a second income, they're uh, most of them, they do this and they sign in for these courses to be a medium learn how to be doing these kinds of things. And then of course the pressure's on to continually do readings and go, um, go to um, mediumship. But I don't know if they tout the finance, the way you're going to learn, earn a lot of money as much as you're going to help a lot of people, or you're going to be in contact with your loved one without having to pay for a psychic, you know, these, they teach you because everybody can be a medium apparently. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, on my travels, I think this is the last thing I want to tell you guys. Sorry, it's so long, but you know, I, I don't have a script and I tend to ramble. I haven't been on here for a while. So um, I was giving a talk at University of Southern Indiana, Edwardsville. And it was supposed to be about Wikipedia, but the person who asked me to do the talk um, put up on the signage that it was going to be from Wikipedia to psychics. <laughs> and I thought, well, I guess these people are expecting me to talk about psychics. So what I did is I pulled out in my hotel room, 
beforehand, I pulled out a video uh, clipping of a two hour gallery session of, of a medium. You guys don't know who it is. This medium doesn't know that I was there. And when I was there and other people were there too, and I was even gotten a reading. But the point is, I will reveal this sometime soon, you guys. I don't know if it'll be soon. It's just too, it's a lot. So I clipped out a six minute um, segment of this psychic medium giving a reading to another woman. And I don't even want to say who it is. Like I said, it's nobody you've heard of, and I don't want to say anything because I don't want the psychic to have any clue. But it was so sad. It was just manipulation. And you could tell how sad and lonely this woman was. And I mean, I wish I could show it to you guys. But anyway, so what I did is I went to this lecture. And I said, I'm going to show you guys this clip. It's seven minutes. I'm going to tell you almost nothing about it. It's happening over Zoom. And this is typical of what's actually going on. So I just played it. And in this classroom that I was in, most of the people were professors. I don't think they had, they were there because they went here about Wikipedia. They weren't really thinking about the psychic part. But I didn't know that until after, you know, I talked to the people when I was there, but I had that psychic little thing prepared. So I went to the back of the room and I'm watching them and they're this like this. It was, they were appalled. They had not, they didn't know this is what it's like. And so you can see it was just very slow. And this medium's talking to this woman and I don't know. And she's like, well, yeah, you know, and this and that. And then they start laughing and then she starts advising her and she starts giving her financial advice. And no, oh, you should do this. Oh yeah, you're right. And, oh, the heck with those people. You know, I'll see you tomorrow for mediumship class. She goes, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. You know, it was so sad. And people in the audience are just like, oh, my gosh. And I said, OK, well, we've got just a few minutes before, you know, I'm, I'm done. So what is your feedback? And they were just like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. They really hadn't thought of it that way. They thought people would go in and just start eating you know, throwing out letters of the alphabet and people would hit on, is it a Bob, a Robbie, a Bob, a blah, 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 you know, like, like people think this going on. I mean, that does happen, but oh, they were just, no. And so I did another talk that same day and I ended my Wikipedia talk early so I could show that video. And the same thing, same thing happened. This is a bunch of skeptics. So they already understood this kind of what was going on with psychics, but they didn't, get how manipulative it is in a friendly um friendship kind of way like the medium and the woman are friends kind of way not like it not like the stuff you see on tv like i said and then i went to albuquerque and i did right after like two days after three days after um i was giving a talk again the same thing it was on wikipedia and then i ended early and i showed that video and um I'm telling you, I've learned so much from these this channel that I'm doing right now and talking to you guys and reasoning it out and talking with like Janice Boyton and Adrian Hill, who's been on this channel. You can see see them in some of the videos. Uh, we've analyzed some of these things and getting their perspective on it. And talking to Daniel Reed about, um, you know, counseling and therapy really learning a lot and the comments you guys leave me lots and lots of thoughtful comments and um it's just been an interesting journey and i think that there's a lot to learn still and i think there's still a lot of education that needs to be done because i don't think people really get it at all i really don't think they do um, somebody asked me in that that uh, evangelical group today asked me well aren't they breaking the law aren't these psychics breaking the law can't we just like call the police or whatever and i was explaining to him that you know some there are laws in some areas but they're unenforced mostly and that 
unless somebody's going to say they were the victim of a crime, they're not going to take it seriously. And a lot of these psychics are now on Zoom. So there isn't a place like as if they were having a venue and in that venue that's happening in a location, maybe there would be laws or something that could be done. Um, but I said that the the world today thinks of this as entertainment and they think what's going on is what you see on TV. What, what really is going on is what I'm, well, I didn't show these kids. I thought it'd be too much for them. But what's really going on is with the stuff you see on this channel. When we go in and we watch a reading and I record it. And uh, that's really what's the kind of thing that's going on. And I told these kids, frankly, I said, my personal opinion, a lot of what's going on is that the police or prosecutors, lawyer, you know, whoever would be, who could go after them, are in their mind at least saying, it's just women. They should know better. How stupid. Of course, psychics aren't real. If you play with, you're throwing around money, you got nothing better to do with your time. You know, if you get caught, I mean, if you get, um, if you lose your money, so what? You know, you should know better. And um, it's just women. And then also they they act like, oh, well, you know, so you paid $75, you lost $75 and the psychic didn't do the reading for you or you, or you found out later that it was all fake or you had a lousy reading. It's just $75. And so you should, whatever, just don't do it again. How stupid. And what they're not, what they're forgetting is, is that to some people, $75 is a very lot of money, is a, is a lot of money. I mean, I've been in large time, parts of my life and $75 extra is going to mean, you know, um, pay, pay my electricity bill or, <laughs> oh, I don't have to delay my electricity bill or I can make my car insurance or I can, um, you know, do something fun and nice or, you know, we could have more on the table to eat and some people that it's even more than that and 75 dollars or 50 dollars or 100 dollars is is a big deal and they probably yeah we could say they probably shouldn't be wasting it on a medium but to say that we we really don't we really don't know we don't really know what their lives are like and that they have no one to turn to i'm on a facebook group that's um it's a grief um death and communication and stuff like that and, and this facebook group and i've shown you there's at least one video here that shows you what's going on in there and i get notifications all the time that somebody's posted and it's not a very trafficked page i mean they probably get a new post every couple days and they only get like four comments and their people would put posts up photos of their loved one and say i'm really i'm missing him a lot today does anybody get anything from this you know it's 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 heartbreaking there's nothing fun and there's nothing entertaining at all about these these messages that i see um and very very lastly so i had to take down a bunch of my matt fraser videos because i used you know when you're starting on a youtube channel you can you can read about it you can talk to people who have youtube channels but for it until you've done it for a while, you start to realize what you can do, get away with, what you can't. So the Matt Frazier, I was using the show. I was showing part of the show that's from his channel. And then I got a bunch of takedown notices that I had to delete them. So I, I took them down. And I've learned now I'm cutting the video and I'm um, taking the segment that has his... Um, video in it and i'm altering it and i did that the other day and i put an altered version up on youtube unlisted and i'm just looking to see if it ever got any kind of restrictions on it and so far no so i'm trying it with one today that was the sound you heard earlier uh, i altered a video i put like a i don't know i just altered it 
and I left my intro and my outro with me talking about what was going on in the video. And I'm going to put it up and I, I think I'm going to go through all the videos that I have pulled down from Matt Frazier because um, I want to put them back up. I think they're good. I think they're well-reasoned and thought out. And one of them has the Adrian Hill in it. And we're talking about the Matt Frazier vid video we just watched. And so I think I'm going to leave it in. So I'm going to try that out. So if you see, if you see some odd looking Matt Frazier videos, and I'm going to probably do that with other videos is like when I use their footage, alter it somehow. You can also alter the sound. This is what people are telling me that, um, you know, I have the right to do this because uh, I'm reacting to it. I'm reacting to their videos. I'm reacting. It, it's, it's, it's fine to do, but the problem is YouTube makes it so difficult. And if you get strikes on your, your videos, then it could be a real problem. And I didn't really want to mess with it. So it's easier to just take it down and then alter it. But yes, I have the legal right to do this because like I said, it's a, I can't think of the word right now, but it's, it's a, can't even think of the word right now but you you're probably screaming at the computer screen right now what it is but like i said i just don't want to have to deal with it it's too much work and if they find and youtube doesn't spend a lot of time thinking about this and matt frazier's got an organization a lot more money than i do and and you know i'm getting a couple hundred views on these videos so um you know it's not that i could change the world kind of thing um I was asked today, why do I continue doing this? There's no money in it. There ain't no money in it. Um, I'm at $90. They still, I haven't even received my first YouTube check. $90 in, um, since September or October. <laughs> There's no money in this YouTubing thing. Um, and they asked why I do this. Why do I continue doing it? I said, you, I get so much of vitriol from comments you know social media people are going to comment and they're really mean but every once in a while i get a message from somebody who says that they saw my work or read my work and they were touched or they learned something and that they feel they seen they feel like they they know more and like maybe they they realize what had happened to them because you can't go to somebody and explain to what the, to them what's going on. You have to let them come to you or wait until they're questioning. And I said, I, I have great commenters on my videos. And I read those and I say to myself, okay, I could probably keep this up a couple more days. You know, maybe I have a little more motivation to keep going for a few, for a few more weeks. And that's kind of what does it. Because I'm certainly not going to change the world. But maybe I can help a couple people out. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys. Um, I will try to get back to doing more regular videos. Thank you so much for everything. Leave your comments. Please like and subscribe. Spend some time in the garden. These are all for my garden. Can you believe it? I can't. Take care, everyone.